Good morning from a very sunny... Wherever the heck we are. Chirox. Chirox Marina, just above Chirox Marina. It's pretty early. Michael was up at like 6.30. Mm -hmm. And in the shower. Because mm -hmm. the idea is we avoid the heat of the day. But I think we're probably going to fail. <laughs> we're not avoiding the heat of the day. We're just avoiding some of the heat of the morning. <laughs> Um, last, it's really nice here. Last night we took a walk up the hill. There's like a big um, country park where the uh, Shirex Colliery used to be. Used to be, and you can walk up and there's a viewpoint and like look around the area. And there's like a fitness trail that we didn't do. <laughs> I think one of them came up. <laughs> Admittedly, one of them seemed to have been disassembled. That's true. Or at least its instructions were missing. So it's like, well, there's these vertical posts, and I'm not sure what we're supposed to do with them. Either way, it's a really lovely, lovely park. And to be fair, we came across two of them and we did one. So we got a 50% success rate. <laughs> we did one. So and I, I think really, we can't really say we skipped things. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't follow the trail. We, no, we, we could have gone it. out of our way. To... We could have gone out of our way. But George was too busy chasing the ball like all over the place. <laughs> so. But yeah, this is a lovely mooring, really friendly marina. Um, so why are we moving on? Because you, you said, should we move on? Well, like, yeah. I said it's up to you, and you went, yeah, I think we should move on. It's true. <laughs> See, I think it's all about, <clears throat> for me, it's the it's the large amounts of foot traffic. Every time there's too much foot traffic, I'm feeling yeah. like there's just too many folks coming too close to the boat and want to move. Yeah. Want to find someplace quieter. I think we're going to get that all the way up the locks, although it's Monday today, so probably a bit quieter than yesterday. We didn't really think about it yesterday, if I'm honest. Yeah, true, Dad. <clears throat> right, so... How many locks did you count them? 23-ish. Uh, wow. So we're, we're just above lock 41. 20 is, I believe, the top. I think it's 21, isn't it? But there's an A in there somewhere. Uh, so... And um, some of them are staircases, which I don't enjoy, but three staircases are quicker than... Or three locks in the staircase are quicker than three single locks, so... Yes. Uh, yeah, we got about a half mile to the first one. And then they cram up really tightly after the first two. Yeah. So there's like half mile and then two in a row and then there's a bit and then and it's the just a whole there's just locks all day. Fun fun. Fun fun. Let's go. Let's go. If you come through this way, there's a really good sandwich shop just above the bridge. We highly recommend it. The first lock of the day is Boundary Lock, and it's a pretty shallow one, which means it's really easy for Michael to get off the boat and help with the paddles. Just around the corner is Cinder Hill Lock. We were a little worried about water levels, but all the bye washes are flowing, so it's all good. That's not ideal. Basically, it means you can only cross over the locks using the top lock gates, which could get interesting on the triple locks. Still, the signpost is a very convenient place to leave George and there's some shade for him too. I walk ahead to set the next lock and meet some little chicks along the way. We must make sure we keep George on a tight leash along here, just in case he gets any ideas about swimming after ducklings. We get out the duck food, it's snack time in the nursery. Another shallow lock and some cool shade too. It's turning out to be a really hot one today. 
There's a workboat moored just above this lock on the offside. Someone from a local house tells us that kids have been playing on it. Unfortunately, it's not in the best position and getting past it as we come out of the lock is going to be a little tricky. It's stuck on the mud and we can't just push it out of the way. Yep, we're kind of wedged here. Michael backs up and I climb through the boat and onto the barge. There's some rope hanging off the side that's binding between us. George is obviously supervising from the towpath. We get past it on the second attempt, but then I'm stuck on the barge. So Michael picks me up and ferries me back to the towpath so I can shut the lock we've just left. What a beautiful area this is. I'm so glad we made it past all the algae and the trees between Retford and Workswap. These locks are all so close together, so again I walk ahead to set the next one, as it's pretty easy for Michael to jump off the boat and close the lock behind him. We arrive at our first staircase of two, just as the contractors arrive to cut the grass. We don't want to get in their waist, so Michael climbs off the boat to do the gates and pedals on the offside, and George and I try and stay out of the way on the towpath side. When entering a staircase of two, the top lock needs to be full and the bottom lock needs to be empty. Once inside the lower lock, the top lock is then drained into the lower lock, which raises the boat. Once the water in the two locks is equalised, the boat can then be moved into the next lock. There's a few signs of algae in this pound, which is a little worrying. So many people told us this canal gets better the further you go, and they were right, it's really gorgeous up here. The water's really clear and there's so many fish here too.
another double lock A chance to pause while the lock fills and we get to enjoy the views. I really must look up some of the meanings of these lock names when we come back down. Now for our first treble lock of the day. On a staircase of three, the bottom lock should be empty and the other two chambers full. Into the middle lock we go. And now into the top lock. Limehouse Lock, that sounds familiar, and a little flashback to when we went out onto the Tidal Thames two years ago. Three more locks to do and they're all part of this treble. Finally we're in the top round, that was a long climb, now just a couple of miles of cruising to the end. Here the canal runs through a lush green corridor. As you approach Trefferton Park, the cut gets deeper and the towpath gets higher.
We pass the visitor moorings and Michael turns the boat around in the winding hole. But that's not quite the end of the cruise. Michael has the ambition to travel on every navigable part of the connected waterway, and so he's going to try and back the boat up as far as he can towards the end of the navigation and the beginning of the collapsed tunnel. We're told that it's too reedy, but that doesn't put him off. I would have been happy just to moor up for the night, but Michael has other ideas. Any excuse to show off his reversing skills. It's less than half a mile, but it's a pretty slow half a mile. there is the end of the Norwood Tunnel. That's the end of the Chesterfield Canal. Uh, I think I got the Silver Pearl location. Main thing is people kept telling me I'd never make it to the end. They're like, there's too many weeds, you'll never make it to the end. There's so many trees down, you'll never make it to the end. Multiple people, you're never gonna make it to the end, you're never gonna make it to the end. There's the end. Michael, the official silver propeller location was actually at the winding hole you passed 15 minutes ago. Either way, I'm very happy to claim our 20 second silver propeller location. Please, can we go more up now? past the Cascade Winding Hole, also known as the Manor Road Winding Hole, and finally onto the moorings. So we've made it. We got to the... Well, you and the boat did, I did. In the boat. Well, yeah, you went about to, to take a photograph. Made it all the way to the end of the Chesterfield Canal, just yeah. directly within, you know, feet of the Norwood Tunnel. Not all the way to the end. I made it all the way to the end of the currently open Norwood... Uh, Chesterfield Canal. Can't take a boat any further without utilizing a significant heavy lifting helicopter or you know some sort of train and truck and crane etc. And now we're facing in the other direction so it's keyed be or bust uh, next. Mm. Yeah and um, well at least West Stock with their bust first and then keyed be or bust second and then yeah. I'm so glad that we when we hit the weed on the forest flight, we didn't go back. Oh, yeah, totally worth it. The flight of logs was just stunning. Like, oh, yeah. There was, they, it didn't take us that long, maybe three and a half hours to get from Shire Oaks to the top of the logs. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a couple of doubles and one treble. Two triples. Was there two trebles? Two, I can't two treble logs. <laughs> Most of them were quite shallow, so they were quite easy to do. Course, they weren't heavy or anything. I mean, they were quite heavy, but they weren't painfully heavy. Yeah, the two at the, the first two of the day were really, okay. the gates were really heavy, but yeah. I think it was just because <laughs> the bottom locks were leaking so much right. that, uh, that they, even with the paddles up, it just wasn't quite equalize. making it. Yeah. So, But it wasn't, like we've done worse, worse flights that, yeah. are sh that are shorter. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And so, yeah, the views. Oh my goodness, the views. Yeah, the views. The goats, <laughs> the, horses. the horses, the whole area, the blue tits, the um, the European common blue tit, which is a very pretty bird, <laughs> really pretty bird. And there was like a few houses by the Turnerwood flight that were really nice, mm -hmm. big houses. Yeah, that was a strange sound. Yeah, somebody was doing something awful to a peacock. And now we're at Kiverton Park, and honestly, if we were allowed to get the train. I would get on the train and go to Chesterfield and see the end of it, mm -hmm. but train travel is still essential only and it's definitely not essential travel for me to... Go visit Chesterfield. Yeah. yeah. I still really want to see Chesterfield. Well, I want to see the restored bit. Yeah, I'd like to see the, the restored bit of canal. I'd like to see Chesterfield itself because 
that's what my grandmother calls a sofa, <laughs> and I'm still trying to figure out why. And um, and it's um, 14 miles from here, I think, so it's just a little bit too far for me to walk. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But um, I think we should probably walk over to the other side of the tunnel. Yeah, we'll have to look at the map, because I don't think there's a walking path that actually adheres to the tunnel, or at least not an obvious one. Oh yeah, we'll look at it. But yeah, I'd like to go and see the other end and see what's there. Yeah. If yeah. Possible. At least a portion of the far side is in water. There's a, tr a trip boat you can rent on that side. Well, not rent, but I guess they do like day trips and yeah. stuff. And um, yeah, so obviously at the moment all of that is not operational, but it would still be cool to see it. So yeah. I think it's a two and a half mile walk you know, sort of as the crow flies to the end of the tunnel. So we'll we'll see. We'll work it out and then we'll let we'll you know. We'll work it out, yeah. Yeah, then we got to the turning point and quite a few people that we met said that you couldn't do from the turning point to the end of the navigation because it was too weedy. And I was quite happy with that. I was going to be like, okay, we'll just turn and stop. But my husband had other ideas. Well, people have been telling us since we got on the canal, we've had at least four people yeah, it's basically too, say, you can't make it past. It's too shallow. There's trees in the way. It's too shallow. There's too much weed. Yeah. You won't make it to the end. You won't even make it to the end. One woman in particular came out and basically just made me think like, are you, are you like the ogre that guards the end of the canal? <laughs> like you just tell everybody, oh, you'll never make it. It'll, it's not going to happen. I would say to everyone that they should come to the Chesterfield Canal and come well, you don't have to go to the tunnel. No, I'm not sure. That, I'm not sure that the last half mile past the turning point is worth it. <laughs> but at least come here. Yeah. To the, to the turning point. The turning place. point's nice, and then you've got a nice little mooring here. I honestly, is probably my favorite canal in terms of everything. Overall picturesqueness is really high. Yeah. It's too bad it doesn't have a, you know, Klingoffin at the end yeah. with the. Uh, lovely ice cream and fresh and it, food and honestly stuff. it's nice that it is quiet but it's too quiet i know i said the other day it's nice having the canal to all to yourself but i'd like a few other boaters around at least well yeah i mean that was the sign we saw today like three months of of lack of use yeah. has really made it so that those locks are really dry really leaky at the moment it's kind of like nobody's been moving but my guess is that by next week we'll be passing people so. I hope so. And also, like, because we'd obviously heard the rumour about how weedy the Chesterfield Canal gets. And I was put off, and we were, we did plan to do it in April and, and May because of that very reason. But we've met people that have done it in the height of summer, and it is doable. And I would just say, don't let it put you off. I'd say come here and, and enjoy it. Right? Yeah, but bring, possibly bring a scythe to <laughs> Forest Bottom Lock. And it's so friendly here as well. We've met so many lovely people and helpful people and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. it's been really nice. It's definitely. definitely high up there on the favorite canals. Yeah. Um, it's definitely high up there on the canals we've spent the most time on. <laughs> so. And I was thinking today, it's like 31 miles from West Stockwith to here, about. I'm pretty sure we've done that in a day on the Manchester Ship Canal. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken us three months. Yeah. That's what I was going to say as well. The, um, there's the Chesterfield Canal Trust who are working to get the rest of it restored. Yeah, and they keep, they do work, volunteer work along yeah. it as well, right? Like, yeah. And you can join the trust and it's really like not much money. It's like 18 pounds for a year for a couple, I think, something like that. Yeah. So we're gonna join, we just need to do it. And the money goes towards the restoration funds and they give you updates and stuff. So we'll link it below, but if you can, definitely support the Chesterfield Canal Trust. Yeah, because if they connected it and you could come back and go all the way to Chesterfield, that'd be amazing. That'd be really cool. Mm. Yeah. I there may be more people to come and use it then. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see how the heck they open up that tunnel. Because that's, <laughs> that's a lot of brick. George is falling asleep. Yes, George is falling asleep. Right, so should we finish it off? Yeah. Okay. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with me rear we're facing reversing all the way back to the end of the canal which is actually that way so i should stop pointing that way and uh yeah give us a thumbs up comment down below hit the bell if you want to get notifications and you should probably subscribe first <laughs>
rates. So, yeah. Yeah. No, it wouldn't. Three single locks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boat has to pass through six skates. One, two, three, four. No, it doesn't. You said three locks. Yeah. Go in the bottom. Go in the. Oh, sorry, you're talking about staircase. Yeah. You said a staircase. A staircase of three. How many gates? <clears throat> a staircase of three locks. Yeah. Is one, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were counting six gates in the staircase. No, no, no. I'm just counting six gates in three locks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that at this point in the morning, we have disagreements on math. <laughs> no, we don't. We have misunderstandings about what type of locks we're talking about. True that. Yeah. And I'm right. So am I. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> with that bit out of the way. <laughs> After our morning domestic. <laughs> Go on that way. Uh, George is standing in front of a bicycle's path, so I'm just keeping track. George? George? Sit down? Yeah, good dog. Okay. Why are you opening my gate that I've just shut? Here the canal runs through a lush green corridor of green. Button. Whoops, mark one. Here's mark. <sighs> good question. Matthew, John, Rengo. Um, what? There's no Matthews in the Beatles. There's no Ringo in the Bible. Oh, well, you never know. The Gospel according to Ringo might simply have been missed. <laughs> it's like, it's like, what, what is the Gospel according to me? Well... <laughs> so, we made it. Come on, focus. Focus, focus. focus. We made it. We've made it, we've made it, we've made Start it. Again. Starting again. Wow. And two it's from here down it's triple, then three singles, then triple. Yeah. Then a single, then a double. And just one double. Yeah. Uh, sure. No, there might be two doubles. <laughs>